welcome to another video i am the star man and i am on the promenade in blackpool and behind me we have the world famous pleasure beach i'll uh, i'll just let you have a little look at that yeah. it's unfortunately closed at the moment and it has been since a lockdown but uh, hopefully later this year this is a new hotel by the way brand new hotel this so there you go now in this video i want to talk about the milky way now i'm gonna go on a little bit i'm gonna go on a bit of a i don't know i can i can i can go on me i can talk and talk and talk now Right, okay, so I've come down to the beach. I think it's going to be quite a nice sunset tonight. Uh, we've had quite a lot of those lately, so uh, that, that's going to be good, I think, later. So I might have a little look at that. I've had quite a lot of photographs of the Milky Way over the past, um, say, about eight years or so. And um, ten, year, 10 years ago, going back 10 years, I didn't even know what it was. Oh, nice. um, and that was when I joined my... Uh, astronomical society um, I had an idea what it was but I didn't really know to be quite honest so I want to talk about it in this video and just give you some idea about uh, what you can expect a certain time of year and conditions how conditions can play a part in what you can see what you can photograph um, so I want to start off with say the picture that I chose as the, um, the thumbnail for this video um, that was taken down in Dorset in the UK and that was taken on the south coast that's the south coast um, and that was actually taken just a few days away from the summer solstice uh, which is quite amazing because it's the shortest night of the year and where I live up here in Blackpool um, the sun doesn't get very low at all at that time of year and we're not we're barely out of uh, nautical twilight um, so a shot like that up here would be very difficult not to mention we've got all the light pollution up here as well but down in Dorset um, it's the latitude is about 50 degrees and that allows for the sun to dip just low enough say about 15 degrees you know to give you enough not not too much twilight that you can capture the Milky Way so that's how that shot was possible really it's all about latitude um, the further north you go uh, the more twilight you're going to get at this time of year so when we come to the milky way the milky way is basically everything we see in the night sky i'm going to be a bit northern hemisphere centric here so everything that we see in the whole night sky is part of the milky way there's only one thing talking northern hemisphere here i'll come to the southern hemisphere on another video one thing that we can see with the naked eye in the night sky that is not a part of the Milky Way, and that is the famous Andromeda Galaxy. Um, just putting a picture of that up on the screen now, a shot of the Andromeda Galaxy, which I took from my back garden. Yes, in the Northern Hemisphere, the Andromeda Galaxy is uh, the only reasonably visible object by the naked eye that isn't a part of the Milky Way very very slight exception if you live near the equator you might just be able to get a glimpse of the magellanic clouds those are two satellite galaxies that orbit the milky way uh, but those you really need to be in the southern hemisphere to see those so the magellanic clouds in the southern hemisphere are other objects in the night sky that you can see that are not part of the milky way so yeah the milky way is really what we're talking about is we're talking about the silvery cloud that goes across the sky that magical silvery cloud and if you've ever seen it you'll know what i'm talking about it's amazing when you see it when you see it in a dark sky it's unbelievable and there are certain times of the year when it's good to go and look for it and we happen to be sort of at that time of the year now i say it's a good time of the year to see the core the slight problem is, is that where we are, where we live in the UK, is that we have the twilight. And this is what I was talking about before with Dorset being on the south coast. It's not far enough south that they can't escape the twilight. There's still twilight on the south coast um, near the solstice. There's enough twilight to make the sky kind of go a little bit blue. As you can see on the photograph, the sky looks kind of blue. And 
we didn't see the Milky Way there for very long, probably about an hour. In fact, um, before I took that photograph, I was talking to some other phot photographers there and we were wondering if we were even going to see it because it got to almost midnight and we still couldn't see it. So the best time of the year, I would say for us to see the Milky Way, uh, where we are certainly in the UK, it might be different where you are, um, it's probably going to be August and September because you can get a chance to see and photograph the galactic core, which is in the region of sky where the constellation of Sagittarius is. And um, I didn't see that until 2014. Yeah, I didn't see Sagittarius until 2014. And when I did, I was blown away. I went down to Cornwall and I'm just going to show you an early picture now on the screen. This is a picture I took. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not a very good picture, really. But it just shows you how good the sky was. It was unbelievable. It was absolutely amazing. It was the first time that I'd seen that part of the sky. Certainly that part of the Milky Way. It was unbelievable. So I just want to talk about a few things that can uh, have a, an effect on what you can see of the Milky Way. Now there's a lot of factors that can determine whether you can see the Milky Way. Weather, light pollution, all kinds of things. You can go to the most darkest place um, in the world looking for the Milky Way and you can get there and it can be all cloudy. So there you've got the weather <laughs> stopping you from seeing the Milky Way. You can go to the darkest place on Earth looking for the Milky Way and you might just get the timing wrong and they'll have a big dirty full moon in the sky so that's not going to do you very good either i've seen people take pictures photographs of it with a, with a full moon but it's not ideal what you really want you want to time your trip to go and see the milky way when there's no moon around or at least when the moon is about to disappear from the sky you, you could have a moon in the sky and then by the time you get there it's gone so it's really a lot down to timing really uh, and as i say in this country if you want to see the galactic core of the Milky Way, the best time to see it is in, I would say, in August and September, because that's when it's going to get to its highest point. You can see it earlier in the year, but the problem is it doesn't rise very high before the sun starts to come up. Things, a lot of different things to think about, um, and, and also different times of the year is in a different position as well. For instance, if you go out in the winter, you get what they call the winter Milky Way. And, and the winter Milky Way, uh, what happens is you kind of look in the opposite way to where you are in the summer. Like I said, in the summer, you're looking towards, if you look towards the south, you might be lucky enough to see the galactic core where you get this big bulge and, and all the star fields are all clumped and you see dark patches and also it looks absolutely incredible because you're looking into the center you're looking into the bulge of the disc and that's why it looks so busy there and that's why these photographs these amazing photographs look so spectacular when you're looking towards the galactic bulge because that's what the milky way chasers really really want now in the winter it's flipped the other way so we're kind of looking outside of the disc we're still looking into the disc if you're looking towards say the constellation of orion if you look above orion sort of subtle Milky Way runs above Orion. Um, it's very, very subtle compared to the summer Milky Way, but it's really, really nice actually. If you see it somewhere really dark, the winter Milky Way is absolutely amazing. Um, so like I say, you can see the Milky Way at all times of the year. It's always there somewhere. The galactic plane will be there somewhere. I'm just gonna show you a picture on the screen now of when I went to South Africa and the galactic plane of the Milky Way, just as it went dark and we went out into the country, this was in Sutherland in South Africa, and the galactic plane was resting on the horizon and it was unbelievable. I've never seen it, in fact, I've, I've never seen that in this country because it happened to be really, really clear and dry where that picture was taken. That picture was taken in Sutherland. It's where they have this Southern African astronomical telescope. Now in the Karoo Desert so there you go it happened to be really really dry and the clarity of the sky was unbelievable and that really helped to be able to see the galactic plane of the Milky Way as it was on the horizon because the thing about the galactic plane being sat on the horizon anything that's on the horizon is going to be could be fairly difficult to see because you're looking through more atmosphere towards it so to be able to see that with my own eyes was unbelievable 
Okay, so I think I've uh, droned on for a little bit. I don't know how long I've gone on for, but uh, hopefully I've given you some ideas about uh, what to expect when it comes to the uh, the Milky Way, what you can expect and, and the kind of things that can affect uh, your view of it if you ever get a chance to see it and you don't see it. Oh, where is it? I can't see it. There could be light cloud, there could be wispy cloud, the haze. Haze is really bad for the Milky Way. Um, I have to say, one of the best Milky Ways I've ever seen in recent years in the UK was actually in Wales. Uh, I went down there with a friend of mine, Mark McNeil, and uh, we went to a place called the Church in the Sea. I'm just going to show you a picture now, another picture. And the Milky Way, the clarity of the Milky Way on that night. In fact, I did a video on it. If you look back, you'll see it. Um, I did a video on this one. Um, I'll put a link up at the top. Um, the clarity of the sky on that night was incredible. We actually watched the Milky Way come out. We could see the clumps, the star clumps, come out before the sky even got dark. Oh, it was amazing. So there you go. I mean, sometimes uh, you get lucky and sometimes you don't. But the more times you try, the more times you go out, the more chances you give yourself of seeing it and then giving yourself a chance to photograph it as well. So if you go to a dark place, that's a good thing to do. If you get the right weather, say I want to go to this place that's really dark when the weather's going to be clear, it's forecast to be clear, that's another, you're giving yourself another chance there. Another thing is you want to avoid the moon, of course. Um, so there's another one. Yeah, so if you think about the moon as well, there's so many things to think about. You also want to avoid light pollution. So you, you might go somewhere that's fairly dark, but you need to make sure that you're in a part of that place that's away from the lights. I mean, there, there are some fairly dark places that do have light pollution fairly close by. So you want to be really out in the dark and you also want to protect your night vision as well. You don't want to be going and wearing a blinding blazing head torch or anything like that. I see people walking through the countryside and they have these absolutely blinding head torches and the thing about a head torch is if you're wearing one of these white light head torches with a beam that goes off for miles, you can't see anything that's in the sky because as soon as you look up, all you're going to see is your beam and you, it's, it's just going to blind you. So you're not going to see anything. So I always recommend that people use a red light. I mean, even if you're just walking out in the country, you know, a red light, if you get a nice, fairly powerful red light, you can see where you're going and you can also look up and see the stars. So there you go. You want to protect your own eyesight. As well. Okay, so that's my little ramble. I um, hope some of it made sense to you. I'm kind of making it up as I go along. Uh, I don't use a script. I don't have a script. All I do is I come out and I have an idea what I want to talk about. So tonight I wanted to talk about the Milky Way and I just go with it really. It probably doesn't quite flow like it does when some people talk about it. So, uh, but I do my best and it's just really to help you really and just give you some idea about what you need to know if you want to go out and have a look at the Milky Way this summer or maybe later in the summer, like I say, August and September great months to see the milky way so hopefully you'll get a chance to get out there and, and and see it and photograph it then so i hope you like this video if you do um hit the subscribe button and also click the uh, little bell so that you'll get notifications of when i do another video and i do hope to be doing some milky way vlogs this year i really do i mean i have done them in the past but i've never done them quite i want to really do them and make them kind of show what i'm doing you know try to show exactly what i'm doing and what i'm photographing and all that sort of thing so that's it thanks for watching and i'll see you again on another video